Ladies and gentlemen of the DCU, I, I, have a, I have a strange relationship with the universe of DC because it seems that it happened again. Quite literally, if, if you're in on the kind of curse here, the blessing and the curse here on the channel, it, it tends to be that more often than not, when I post a news roundup of some sort of DC video, well, some DC news drops. It doesn't happen every time, sometimes to get a day off, but more often than not, it, it really does happen. If you know, you know, and literally two minutes after I upload yesterday's video, well, we finally, guys, we finally got the casting for Jonathan Kent in James Gunn's Superman. So I do recommend checking out my video yesterday if you haven't seen it already. It is a DC News Roundup. We get in some very interesting topics surrounding David Corrin's sweat, even going over to some Zack Snyder stuff, some comments there. But today, I wanted to dedicate a whole video to this casting. I want to give my thoughts on it. Also get into how I, th I think this kind of affects the movie, if you will. But also, as you guys know, I like to kind of really get into what the community of the DC fandom is saying so there's gonna be some reactions that I go over and there's quite a few negative ones uh, So we're gonna get into that so from the rap here ladies and gentlemen It says Superman finds Johnson Kent in Pruitt Taylor Vince exclusive James Gunn's Superman has cast veteran actor Pruitt Taylor Vince as Jonathan Kent aka Pa Kent uh, the rap has learned exclusively. Now, I don't know if this means, as I'm posting this video, it is for all I know, freaking the Mark Kent, Martha Kent podcasting got a drop. Now, this is where things get interesting because Superman, as I've talked about before, James Gunn's Superman, so far, one of the commentaries surrounding it in the public town square of the DC fandom is that it hasn't got like a, it's not got like a crazy star pool, if you know what I mean. For example, in Man of Steel, you would have like, you know, Jarrell being Russell Crowe. You have Kevin Costner as Jonathan Kent, and we're going to get into that because there's a lot of comparisons here. You know, Ben Affleck was Batman in the DCU, so on and so forth. Not everyone was like a big, big, big name, but in the DCU so far, all while we shouldn't, you know, rule anything out, who knows? They could get a big actor for Hal Jordan, they could get a big actor for Batman, but in Superman, all while I am very, very happy, very happy with the cast, I would say that Nicholas Holt or maybe even, I guess you could say, Millie Alcock coming off of House of the Dragon is somewhat the ceiling of popularity in terms of celebrity for the casting so far. Now, David Sweat, this is going to be probably a massive breakout role for him. I would say that, obviously, Rachel Brosnahan is quite a well-known actor as well. She's fantastic. But you, you get what I'm trying to say. So I think some people were thinking maybe you might get the kind of, like, you know, there was rumors that Kurt Russell could have been Jonathan Kent. You see where where people were going with this. Maybe one of the star pools that audiences might be like, oh, I know that guy, I, you know. Uh, could have been one of those maybe minor roles in the film. But obviously, Pruitt Taylor Vince isn't, you know, I would say Kevin Costner level or, you know, Russell Crowe level. However, he is, you know, an actor who's been in many things that I've been watching since I was a flipping kid. Now, I've seen him in things like when I was very young, probably too young to be watching Keanu Reeves as Constantine uh, when he pr played that priest character. I cannot remember the name. Uh, he was in The Walking Dead, most famously known for shooting Carl. Uh, he was in Bird Box. He's been in a bunch of things. Even X-Files for crying out loud. Here's my thoughts on it. I will say that maybe to be fair, if I'm really transparent here, maybe subconsciously I was thinking, yeah, it might be one of those bigger castings just in the minor role. Maybe I was thinking that in the back of my head. So I guess you could say it is a bit of subverted expectations for a lot of people, but that's not a bad thing. I actually think Pruitt Taylor Vince, and I don't know if this is kind of the unpopular opinion with what I'm reading, and I'm going to read out some reactions from, again, the public town square if you will, in just a second. But I think he is a good casting for Jonathan Kent. He does give me the warm kind of Kansas farmer vibes. I mean, if you really know Jonathan Kent from that of the source material, he actually can and does often reflect a look like Pruitt Taylor Vince. Now, that may be like, hey, Boba, really? Uh, to some of you who may look at, I don't know, obviously Kevin Costner from uh, Man of Steel or John Snyder from Smallville who, you know, a lot of fans love. And they're, of course, very valid Jonathan Kent, but I, I just feel like some people are already just being like, hey, Pruitt Taylor, he's not Jonathan Kent, but it's like, well, look at Superman for all seasons. Look at All-Star Superman. And he does give that kind of vibe. If you're unfamiliar with his work, if you want to trust me on anything, I mean, you, you watch me after all, so I'd like to think that what I say might hold some kind of resonance. I have a lot of faith 
in his acting ability. He is more like he's that kind of actor who really it, like a character actor who just completely gets into the roles that he's in. He's fantastic and I can really easily imagine him like this is like a breeze for him to play someone like David Corrinsweat's Clark Kent's father. One other thing I'm very happy about but another thing we need to talk about is that some people aren't happy or didn't want Jonathan Kent to be alive in this film. Whereas I've been saying this whole time, I think it'd be a very nice change to have both Martha and Jonathan Kent alive while Superman is in the early years of his career. Because it is important to remember that David Corrin's where Superman is, as James Gunn said, an established hero. Or while it's not an origin, so he's not a noob, but he's not a veteran, so he is in his formative years. I often like to use the example of just comparing it to the Batman Man. Matt Reeves says that wasn't an origin, but it pertains to his origin because he's the Batman who's still becoming. I look at David Cornsweet's Superman as basically in that Superman who's still becoming, navigating his way, albeit he has been flying around with the red cape and saving people from bridge collapses and flash floodings and God knows what else. But I think the 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 somewhat, obviously, Kent's still being there for Clark to go back to and have some very significant moments in the film, even if they're minor roles, you know, they could still help guide Clark just like they do in the source material. And I really do think of certain panels for, for Superman for all seasons, when you have spring, for example, the spring part of that comic book is narrated, if you will, by Jonathan Kent. And then obviously All-Star Superman. And yeah, in All-Star Superman, he does die. And we're going to get onto that uh, in just a minute because there's all kinds of theories we can go down the road of here. But I completely disagree with some people being like, well, Jonathan Kent can't be alive when Superman is Supermaning because he teaches that Clarks that Superman can't save everyone. I'm like, you really don't think that Superman can't still get that guidance or that learning curve or somewhat wake up call to despite being all powerful that there's some things he can't do even with them alive if anything I think that's a nice way to kind of coast him into some of the more pivotal parts of uh, I guess this self-discovery that Superman is still on uh, in this movie now let's get into a few fan reactions so we have from this user here I think everyone's reaction is wasn't at all my choice but the vision is there. And I think that kind of speaks to what I've already been talking about with my experience. Also, secondly, I do want to add that I do have a lot of faith in James Gunn's casting ability. I don't think Gunn, especially with a movie as important as this, is just gonna be like, oh yeah, yeah, Pruitt Tale events, you know, yeah, you're, you're Jonathan Kent, just randomly. You know, I don't think Gunn's gonna close his eyes and put his fingers into a little bag and just pull out a name and be like, okay, this is yours. So, um, here we have another comment here saying, it's clear that Twitter has never seen what a Kansas farmer looks like. Amazing casting for Park Kent. And then we have this reply to that uh, tweet saying, exactly, pics of literal Kansas farmers. I'm from the South, been seeing this for over 20 years. And I guess, yeah, here's a couple of Kansas farmers. And then you kind of, again, I, I, I guess you can look at Pruitt Tale events, combine it with these real Kansas farmers, and then combine it with the actual influences behind this movie, All-Star Superman, uh, Superman for All Seasons. And, you know, I, I guess visually here, and I'm speaking visually because a lot of people are saying visually that Pruitt Taylor Vince isn't Jonathan Kent. And the, the funny thing is they actually couldn't be further from the truth there. It's just maybe not what they've absorbed so far as Jonathan Kent. So yeah, he actually does really kind of, you can easily see him being a, a, a Kansas farmer here. Uh, so I do agree with these comments. So this is what I mean. You, you get some comments like this saying, how do you go from Kevin Costner to this guy? guy. And I, I, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Like, are they talking about what we were talking about earlier? Like, you know, the pull of a star quality, so to speak, or, you know, some people have been um, going as far as freaking body shaming on Twitter saying, oh, you know, why does this guy look like this compared to Kevin Costner's Jonathan Kent? And it's just like, well, we have this reply to that tweet saying, probably had a great audition. Casting purely for star value is lame and shallow. No reason to hate on it until we actually see the performance. Y'all are just sad that your universe is dead. That's a win in my book. Okay, well, I agree with like the first part there, you know, where he says, you know, casting purely for star value is lame and shallow. 
I, it, this kind of goes to what we were saying earlier in how I do think like there are two sides to this coin. Casting for star value can be a good thing and a bad thing. I guess, you know, you can say it's shallow in a sense because you can just cast somebody as the main lead for your movie and they're more of a big name, but are they really the right casting for the role? Maybe not. And as a result, you'll get a lot of people being like, this guy doesn't act anything like that character. Their acting isn't good. They're clearly here just for the bag, you know, even if they're a big name. Do you know what I mean? So star value doesn't always bring in the attention but on the upside a star coming in who's very popular obviously can get a lot of fans to want to go see them in that role they might also be very good in that role so you you see what i mean but i don't think that should always be your lens or your filter over what you're doing as a casting director or what james gunn is doing you should obviously look at actors you know who are coming in for auditions as jonathan kent or whatever actor david corin sweat to whoever rachel brosnahan for lois you know out of all of these names for the front runners for these roles and and, and judge them based on, you know, okay, they, they, they've got their previous credits in multiple movies and shows, but like, who is the best person for the job? Now, again, I, I'm not pretending to be naive here. I, I do think having stars can be important, but I do think here, you know, it doesn't matter if you go from Kevin Costner to this guy. I think that is, and what I do agree with that user in saying here, that is kind of a, I don't know, a shallow kind of myopic kind of point of view on how these things can work. But we have another one here. Name a bigger downgrade, once again, comparing Kevin Costner to Pruitt Taylor uh, Vince here. And uh, the user sarcastically says, uh, taking the piss out of the post saying, you know, my Park Kent is hotter than your Park Kent. Um, and the reply is saying, you know, Park Kent is supposed to both teach Clark to help people and that he can't help everyone. Snyder wasted Costner. And yeah, that's, I guess, the big debate around him, you know, staying where he was and getting absorbed uh, in that scene. You know, lots of people defend that. So quite a lot of people aren't happy about that. But, um, you know, I guess, you know, on both sides, I do understand that whether, you know, uh, Jonathan Kent dies... Uh, from a heart attack or in the way he did in Man of Steel, the similarity is there in the sense that Clark can, I guess, learn something from that in the age-old kind of, hey, Jonathan Kent dies, it teaches Clark that he can't necessarily save everyone. Obviously, you can debate how that was conducted in Man of Steel, but I don't get where people are coming from, where it's like you can't have Martha and Jonathan Kent still guide Clark in his early years as Superman. I'm not saying that Jonathan Kent can't still die, because he might still die in this very movie. I mean, for example, we have this user is saying, man, this is probably going to be adapted. Man, this is going to be so sad. So this is uh, a few panels out of uh, All-Star Superman, nonetheless, here. One of the influences uh, for Superman Legacy. Again, I do want to remind you, though, this isn't got to mean it's automatically copy and pasted. So we can't confirm that Pruitt Taylor Vince's freaking Jonathan Kent is going to die. But yes, uh, Jonathan Kent does die there, as you see in these panels. Uh, you can you can see Clark saying, "Pa, you know, I can't. Wh why can't I hear Pa's heartbeat? Pa, no, not not my Pa. I can save him, and he j he's just." you know, flying with such speed that Superman's freaking hair starts uh, catching on fire. And he's like, I can save everybody. And you know what? Like, who knows? Uh, we could get some beautiful Jonathan Kent scenes in this film with Pruitt Taylor Vince. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, David Cornsweet's Clark flies back home. I don't know. Maybe he could take Lois there if they're already dating. Like, again, we still got a lot to learn about the status quo of things in this movie. We know that Clark is a fu fully fledged reporter, but... Does Lois know that he's Superman? Are they dating? Have they already been dating for six months? Or are they about to date? Like, do you know what I mean? But either way, there's so many ideas they can do. But also, yeah, maybe the second act, the third act, there could be um, a heart attack-esque moment on the farm. I don't think it's necessary. I do think it can happen at some point in the future. But yes, you could argue that just like in All-Star Superman, that could just be a part of the events in this movie that help, I guess, you know, mold... David Corrin sweats Superman is kind of one of the crucibles he has to go through on top of everything else with Luther and God knows what else. And it would be a bit different, you know, obviously quite a, a lot of times Superman loses, or should I say Clark loses Jonathan Kent when he's younger. But again, in All-Star Superman, specifically in issue six, he's kind of early on, but he is Superman. So again, Gunn could be looking to do that same thing here, because what do we know about David Corrin sweat? Already Superman, hasn't been Superman for a super long time, but he's not a noob. He's not like day one, month two, uh, or anything like that. So it could reflect All-Star Superman with how he's been flying around as Superman 
And he, as Superman, he flies to Jonathan Kent, similar to this panel when he dies. Um, and that would obviously be different compared to, let's just say, you know, Smallville or like Man of Steel when Clark isn't even Superman and he watches his father die before he even dons the red cape. But honestly, even out of All-Star Superman, I would say that this screams Superman for all seasons to me. And, you know, there's some panels here just to show you the uh, Jonathan Kent narration. Folks tend to call him the Man of Steel nowadays. I guess that he's the most famous person in the world, not that he was ever interested in being famous in the first place. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, change the course of mighty rivers faster than a speeding bullet. We knew he was special, but people will talk. Believe it or not, there was a time before all of that when he was just a man's son. And, you know, you, you get some of these flashbacks uh, of, of Clark Kent on the farm there. My son, Clark Kent. And you see him continue to narrate. And again, like, granted that Jonathan Kent here um, doesn't have a beard, I can see that being Pruitt Taylor Vince there just tending to the Kent farm. And then you have this moment after, you know, Clark has been Superman for a bit and he comes back and, you know, you just have him sneaking up on Jonathan. He's like, can you stay for supper? And he's like, how did you know that was me? Mud on city shoes has its own sound. And I'd know your footsteps anywhere, Clark. I can imagine a scene like that in the film where Clark, again, having been Superman for a while, David Corrin sweats Superman, just coming back home. It's like, hey, you know, welcome home, son. You look good. And it's like, can you stay for dinner? And then they're having dinner. It's stuff like this of which I would love to see in the film. There's literally so much they can pull. Another uh, favorite panel of mine is... Uh, when Clark is in his room and he's having this moment that I guess you could say somewhat reflects what a lot of people think can only be done with Jonathan dying. Now, I'm not saying this is the exact same, but you have this panel with Clark saying, Pa, I began to think that I could do anything and I can't. And Jonathan says in the doorway of the of the room, well, my first year when the corn came up, it was the talk of the county. And I got wrong-headed enough to believe that every harvest would be a prize winner. The next year, two fields went fallow. It's not nearly as hard learning you have limitations as it is learning how to work with them. Over time, I'd like to think I became a pretty darn good farmer. Over time, son. And, yeah, oh, man, I don't know. I pray, I, I really do freaking pray for scenes like this in the film. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, Jonathan Kent should be alive to help freaking guide Clark as of when he is where he's at in, in James Gunn's Superman. And I know some of you disagree with me, but there's panels like that which make me feel like I'm right until he dies from a heart attack. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've basically got a lot of, I mean, pretty much all of the Superman cast now. I mean, I think Gunn pretty much confirmed that all of the cast members were chosen. It's just that maybe we hadn't heard all of them at the time. So obviously, we got David Corrinsweat as Clark Kent, Superman. Shout out to Job Parts here for the artwork. Amazing artwork here for uh, Wendell Pierce as Perry White. I don't think he cast Wendell Pierce without wanting his kind of demeanor that he carries in a lot of roles out there, which is, I can just see a picture perfect as Perry White in The Daily Planet and how he's going to act around Rachel Brosnahan's Lois and Corin Sweat's Clark Kent. Obviously, you've also got Millie Alcock as Supergirl here. Um, I do expect to see her in the film. Uh, that's probably why they cast her before they found a director for Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Then, of course, Rachel Brosnahan as Lois Lane. Lex Luthor, Nicholas Holt. Um, of course, we can't forget about Skylar Gazondo as Jimmy Olsen. Um, Terrence Rosemore as Otis, one of Luthor's men there and then of course we can't forget about uh eve teschmacher played by sarah sampaio sampaio i always keep forgetting how that's pronounced um obviously maria gabriella de Freer here as the engineer um nathan fillion as guy gardner anthony carrigan as metamorpho isabella Merced as hawk girl and uh, I guess we're just waiting to find out who Martha Kent is. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be maybe one or two other roles in the film that we don't know about. That might be a surprise until we see the movie. But I'm going to stop my rambling there. Uh, let me know what you think about this. I just wanted to have a bit of a nerd geek out because I have been really, really wanting Jonathan Kent in this movie to be alive. And, you know, I just saw the potential of how much that could influence the story and something that is a bit fresh. Um, and I am happy with this casting. So let me know what you think of it Taylor Vince who would you like 
kind of with this flavor of casting, if you will, for the role of Martha Kent. So not only let me know your thoughts on that, but also let me know what you think about what some people are saying about this casting. Let me know what you think about some of the theories I said, the influences of Thrill Season, some of the scenes that I can see play out, any that you might be able to see. Just let me know down in the comments below. But if you got this far, leave a like on the video. Consider subscribing for more rambly videos just like this. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i'll see all of you kryptonians in the next video goodbye